time to react to the property manager of Sarah Boone, who is the one who put her boyfriend into a suitcase and zipped him up and left him in there while she went up to bed after a night of drinking. She went up to bed, passed out, and came back the next day, and he was dead in her suitcase. Anyway, so this is the property manager of the apartments where George and Sarah lived, and her name is Melissa, and we just found out, I believe yesterday, that she's going to be a witness for the prosecution in this case. Today's date is February 26, 2020. The time now is partially told of five hours. This is in reference to Orange County case number 20-017904. I'm currently located at Tealwood Park Apartments, 4704 Lucier, Lucier for Winter Park, Florida, 32792. I am here with my partner, Detective Scott Long, with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And can you state your name? Melissa yeah. May Sexton. You are the property manager of this complex, correct? Yes. Okay. And <clears throat> um, we had Kim in here asking about the tenants. Sarah Boone and George Torres, and they have lived here, um, you gave us a date of February 9th, 2018? Correct. Okay. Okay, so that date is significant to me because she said that Sarah and George have lived there since February 9th, 2018, and we know that George lost his life on February the 23rd, 2020. So basically, two years later, they had lived there for two years, and George said that he had dated Sarah for about six months before they moved in together. But the only, well, the main proof that I've been able to find that they were together was October 17th of 2017, and he made his first Facebook post allegedly about Sarah. Oh, what was it? Something saying like, um, he's no longer lonely, that he's finally found the love of his life or something, something along those lines, kind of mushy, too mushy for me, but gross. <laughs> so anyway, if you calculate those, October 17th of 2017, when he first posted about Sarah, to when his life ended, um, February 23rd, 2020. That's about two years and five months, by my calculation, that they actually knew each other. Now, Sarah told everyone that they had been dating and living together both for three and a half to four years. So, to me, that's just another lie that she told. I think she thinks it makes her look better. But, see if anyone agrees with me. Like, how attached are you? And how well do you know someone after living with them for two years? And they didn't even live together for the entire two years because... She had called the police on him at least 16 times, and she said that he went back to live with his parents quite frequently while they were together. So, basically, even though they knew each other that whole time, they weren't together that whole time. So, how attached could she really have been to George? I don't think she was as attached and... I really don't think that she was in love with him either. I think she just... Wanted someone to torture. Um, you had told us that Sarah would confide in you about her and George's relationship. Can you tell us further what she would tell you? Yes. Um, Sarah, when, shortly after she moved in um, with George, she came to the office um, to talk to me. We noticed bruises and stuff on her. And... Um, she asked me if she could talk to me privately and asked how I could, how she would be able to get George off of the lease. Is there any? Okay, that, she asked, she went to the manager's office and asked could she talk to her privately. Now, I don't know if any of you remember this, but in one of the 
police body cam interviews that she she did on one of the times that she called the police on George. She asked that police lady if she could talk to her privately too. And the police lady was saying, well, that's what you're doing right now. What do you mean, can I talk to you privately? It's just the two of us out here. You know, she just has a pattern of asking that weird question. And um, what the detective Chelsea said right there was that um, Sarah would confine in the apartment manager and what she means is confide in case anyone is confused about that, which I was, you know, cause she confined George to the suitcase. So she's definitely a confiner also. Uh, which prompted, you know, deeper conversation. Uh, she proceeded to let me know and was showing me a lot of bruises and marks. Uh, there were handprints, scratches. She even at one point had to go to the hospital through multiple conversations that we had had. It steadily progressed, you know. Um, she had a very large gash at one point in her shin. She had to go to the hospital and get that taken care of. I'm not exactly sure what it was from, um, but I think it had to do when they got into a fight outside <laughs> and something got broke. I think it was one of their wine glasses or something. But, um, you know, she came to me at one point asking, you know, what do I do? Like, how can I get rid of him? You know, I don't, I've never dealt with this type of situation. Um, I just counsel her as she could. There it is. I've been looking for that. So I may have to rewind that play it again. Yeah, I think I'm going to rewind it. Listen to, she said, that, how can I get rid of him? That stood out to me. Get rid of him. Oh, there you know, I don't, I never dealt with this type of Get rid of him. I'm going to rewind it again. But, um, you know, she came to me at one point asking, you know, what do I do? Like, how can I get rid of him? You know, I don't, I've never dealt with this type of situation. I mean, to me, that's a clue. Is that what the words I'm looking for? I'm not sure the words I'm looking for, but she she asks, how can I get rid of him? It's like she was trying to figure it out for quite some time before she actually went through with it. She actually did get rid of him. And how long, could it have been premeditated? It sounds like it could have been. And then here, I like this part also. I've never dealt with this type of situation, Sarah told Melissa. Now, I remember in her police interrogation, Sarah said um, something like, I don't know what to do, and I always know what to do. So it sounds like she has a pattern of saying that she did, doesn't know what to do. More lies. Um, I just counsel her as she continued to come to me and explain to her that, you know, she had to make a decision if she was going to stay with him or not be with him. If she, you know, was going to try to work things out, they needed to seek out therapy, help, something. <laughs> um, it wasn't too long after that last conversation that I found out the police had came and George was arrested. Uh, I don't remember about how long it was in between time, but there was another incident after that where they both got arrested, all for domestic. Um, the complaints are had throughout their whole term, roughly about 20 to 30 noise complaints, fighting, arguing, uh, banging on doors, uh, loud music. It was just always something pertaining to their lifestyle. I do know that I... Okay, mark that. She said there's about 20 to 30 noise complaints. You know, they only lived there for two years. 20 to 30 before May of 2018? That's a lot. Both of them intoxicated as early as 9 o'clock in the morning. And I mean staggering, falling down, intoxicated. <laughs> Both of them. Um, and there was a noise complaint that I had received about some fighting one day that was going on. And Sarah was actually wandering around the property very drunk. Um, barefoot, not properly dressed, <laughs> I'll say it like that. Okay, I think this must be a different version of Melissa's interview than what I originally heard because I can hear 
her voice in my mind, in my memory, saying that Sarah was walking around without pants on, that she was naked from the waist down. Does anyone else remember that? And why is not why it's not playing here? I don't know, but that's what I remember, and I remember it in this lady's voice. In her, you know, the sound of her voice is in my memory, like... Sarah would be walking around, or was walking around with no pants on, naked from the waist down. And another thing about this property manager lady, Melissa, um, for some reason, anytime she says the word drunk or intoxicated, she laughs. And I don't understand why. I don't know if I am lacking a sense of humor about being drunk or the word drunk. I don't know what's going on, but... She thinks it's funny. I don't know why. What do y'all think? Um, uh, sitting on the side of her building over by the retention pond. Um, when I was told about that is when I approached Sarah, sat down, talked to her. I even had also separately went and talked to George and told them that once they had served up, I needed to have a meeting with them. Um, the following business day, because this was a Friday, I do remember that. Um, I went to see them Monday, roughly about 12 o'clock. They were sober. <laughs> they apparently had had some epiphany, you know, that they were going to straighten themselves up and start acting right. And they did very good for, well, basically until now. I haven't gotten any complaints since May of the past year, you know, but up until... Okay, so they moved in in February of 2018, and then they got 20 to 30 complaints up until May of 2019. That's a lot. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is because she's gonna later talk about how strict of a, a landlord she is. Landlady. <laughs> to me, 20 to 30 noise, or 20 to 30 complaints from other tenants, and she still didn't evict them? That's not strict at all. It's very lenient. It's the opposite of strict point the complaints were consistent monthly always um. Sarah's neighbor Vincent explained why the other tenants quit complaining about George and Sarah's being a nuisance to their neighborhood um, was because it didn't do any good you know they just all learned that it was kind of a thing that they had to put up with what I don't remember how he worded it was that everybody just knew that that's what they did. You know, they were basically a nuisance. Did, would you ever speak with George by himself? Like, did he ever confide in you about their relationship? The one time um, where, like I was just saying, that um, when I talked to her, she wanted me, she asked me to go talk to him. Um, but she's like, please, but put the fear of God in there. Fear of God in there. <laughs> I'm a very... Okay, here's another pattern of Sarah's. She tells people what to do. You know, she told the landlady, Melissa, go put the fear of God in him. And if you remember in her 2018 police body cam she told the policeman there, go get him. So she uses other people as weapons against, or she did in the past, used other people as weapons against George. And I, I also think she used a baseball bat as a weapon, and we know she used a suitcase as a weapon. She was very much into weapons, all kinds of weapons. There and she is. She Did that. you hear that? And she said that um, something about her being a property management. She doesn't tolerate a whole lot of crap. And Sarah knew that. Now, I don't believe that. I don't think she's a liar or anything. I just think <laughs> she might be a little bit confused. Is that um, I think Sarah knew that this property manager did tolerate a lot of crap from her. I think she manipulated Melissa. Go put the fear of God in him. Sarah needed the fear of God. 
And she definitely needed Jesus. And she knew that. And, um, well, I didn't she, rewind it enough. I want to rerun that part. Fear God in him. Fear God in him. <laughs> I'm a very stern property manager. You know, I don't tolerate a whole lot of crap. <laughs> right. And she knew that. And, um, well, Melissa did giggle after that, so maybe it was a joke. <clears throat> she seemed scared of him at the time. So I said, sure, no problem, just stay here. Okay, I do agree that Sarah probably did pretend to be afraid of George. But I, I think it was just pretending. I don't believe she was actually afraid of him. I mean, she was quite a bit bigger than George. George was 5'2", 103 pounds. Sarah was 5'3", 140 pounds. So, I don't believe her one bit. Well, basically, I don't believe most of what Sarah says, but especially, I don't believe that she was afraid of George. You know, and the property manager will go on to say that um, she felt like George was the dominant person in the relationship and that she never saw any... Uh, marks or bruises or in, anything like that on him. Oh, what was, there was another thing that she said also. That George never said anything to her about Sarah being abuse. No, he did say something to her about that. But um, Sarah told Melissa in front of George that George was physically abusive with her and George didn't deny it. Now... She does also say that she rarely saw George or talked to him, so I don't know where she came up with these ideas that George was the dominant one if she was never around him and that he didn't have marks on him if she never saw him or she rarely saw him. Sarah does have a pattern of putting her hands on people. Her ex-husband, former husband, Brian Boone, said that she would get very violent when she was drinking, and she was always drinking, and that she would dig her claws into him. But he thought it was okay because she was tiny, in his words. But it's not okay, and it sounds very painful. And if he would have reported her... For committing a crime is a crime for her to put her claws in him or anyone and put her hands on him you know there's a chance that George would still be alive but there was also the time that we saw in the police body cam video where she tried to give the policeman a hug and he refused it so we know that she likes to put her hands on people um, I can't swear to it, but I heard about all the the things that she was doing wrong in jail. And it seemed like she was also having a problem with that in jail. But I'll have to review that later to say for sure. I, I do remember in particular that she hoarded a whole bunch of pieces of cheese. And they shook down her cell and found her <laughs> bunch of cheese hoarding that she had going on. going to contact the police or whatever we need to do. But you can't keep crapping on me. I had asked her several times to quit touching me. <laughs> and because of that, she would do the same thing to Jean, and Jean didn't like it. Right. So, um, you know, he, that's what he was explaining to me, is she was always the touchy one, the aggressive one. You know, not that she was hitting him, but she would be, like, in his face, or she might, you know, push him, or, you know, little things like that. 
and she would block him from coming out of the room or whatnot, and he would take her and move her. You right. know what I mean? And just that's the way he had explained it to me. Right. She has told me, even literally to Monday, I have been told by her several occasions that he has drugged her around by the hair of her head. Um, I've been, you know, told about by neighbors. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have it anymore. But at one point, a tenant actually sent us a video clip via text. Uh, them two fighting and beating on each other out in the backyard. I would love to see that video clip. I wonder if there's any way that the police can get it from that tenant. You know, she says that she doesn't have that on her phone anymore, Melissa. But, you know, I think that, you know how multiple witnesses can see the same thing and see it differently? I think it could be that kind of situation where Melissa looked at the video clip of them fighting and she saw two people fighting with each other. Is that right? Yeah. But I think I could look at it and see Sarah attacking George and George trying to defend himself against her. I think really that could have been what was going on. But if you can't tell, I'm really on George's side. I mean, it's just horrible the way that he died. It was so torturous. Um, there was another complaint incident about a ladder being propped up to the wall. That George was using to climb over the wall <laughs> to try to get back into his apartment, sneaking in and out. There was another night, sorry, I forgot to tell you about this too, uh, I got a call for one of my vacants in building 24, uh, 4724, which is not their building. <laughs> there was a tent set up on my vacant back porch. <laughs> and it's apparently where George was sleeping for a couple of nights because she had him out of the house. Okay, so she said a couple of nights. So that goes against my two year and five months time timeline that they were together because, you know, he was also going to his parents' house and going to jail. So I wonder how long they were actually together. I don't think it was two years and five months. Why is Brian Boone in this picture? <laughs> What's he doing there? <laughs> He's not really there for this interview, but I'm just saying in this video, he just showed up out of the blue. I have another tenant here who may or may not speak to you, I'm not sure. Um, for that reason, I don't want to give you her name just yet without sure. talking to her, but yeah. George and her fighting that the, a different evening had actually wandered into her home. He was so drunk and had no idea where he was. And when she came home, luckily her kids were not there because she was a single mother with three kids. George was actually upstairs in her house, hollering, looking for Sarah, thinking he was in his apartment. <laughs> now, if y'all remember Brian Boone's police interview, he made a similar statement that someone came into their home hollering for Sarah in the middle of the night, like 3.30 or 4 in the morning. So I wonder if it was George. I mean, he's, he could have... How many people are going to go yelling for Sarah in people's homes? It doesn't seem like it would be more than one. And, you know, George seemed to really be in love with Sarah. And I haven't seen any evidence of the opposite, of Sarah being in love with George. She seems so evil to him you know when I was talking about he made a Facebook post about him being with Sarah on October 17th 2017 um, I will have to find the video again where she responds to one of George's Facebook posts and like is totally being evil to him on Facebook and her response to him like talking about what a horrible boyfriend he was and he treated her badly and you know just being very public about how much she disliked him or hated him I just I couldn't get over it you know and even uh, Vincent the neighbor talked about how Sarah was always yelling that she hated George and George would yell it back at her <laughs> so I don't I don't feel the love from Sarah to George Some incidences with them in that aspect, but nothing has ever been um, 
so bad that, you know, I didn't feel that we could resolve the problem. And like I said, we haven't had any issues since May of last year. No complaints, no nothing until this. So we thought, hey, they're going great. You know, maybe they fixed their problems. <laughs> I mean... Has she come to you since May of any, of any issues? No, okay. not one time. But then, again, you did... It basically, they were told you're going to be evicted if there are. Yes. So it's kind of like uh, tighten up or get out. Yeah, it was. Okay. But Okay, if you listen to Melissa's um, statements, she never said that. I believe that Detective Chelsea put these words into her mouth. And she liked them. She agreed. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. But she never actually said that she threatened to evict George and Sarah. <sighs> I don't like it when people get words put in their mouth you know it's like a song lyric in my head like only you can speak the words on your lips I like to hear people's own words you know if she would have said hey did you threaten them at all if Melissa would have said yes well what was the threat that you gave them I threatened to evict them you know it's different if Melissa would have said it versus the detective asking her did you say this did you say that you're going to evict him? Did you tell him that? And then she's like, uh, yeah, 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 that's the ticket. That's what I said. But if I was over it. Yeah. If it continued, I was putting them out. All right, so. Did you ever see any marks on George? No. Not one. <laughs> not one. <laughs> you know, George was a little bit darker skin. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Would you see George as often as you saw Sarah? It sounds no. like Sarah can be a lot more. Yes. Yeah. As we would always see Sarah as far as the only time I ever really saw George is the time when we actually got George to sign off the lease. Right. Um, and he so it sounds like Sarah succeeded in getting the George or getting George off of her lease, her apartment lease. Um, <clears throat> and if you heard Melissa there, she, the detective asked her, did you ever see any marks on George? And she said, no, not one. And then she asked, well, did you see George very often? She said, no. Well, of course, you're not going to see marks on him if you're not even seeing him. My goodness. She came to me and said, you know, I can't get back in the house. <laughs> She's got all my personal paperwork because would you please have a conversation with her so that I can get my personal paperwork back from her? He goes, but do you have a bolt cutter, a set of bolt cutters for my bicycle that's out back? And I said, what's it chained to, you know? And he said, it's actually chained to your AC unit. I said, yeah, no problem. I'll cut the lock. I'll cut the lock for anything attached to my AC unit. It's not supposed to be attached to that. Oh, right. So I went out back and actually cut the lock on both of the bike locks because Sarah would not answer the door for me because she knew George was there. Okay. Um, once George was gone, she had actually, because Sarah had my cell phone number, um, being that I had already went through and just got out of a very abusive relationship, Sarah knew that because, you know, I confided in her and explained that um, she did feel a lot more comfortable in coming to me. So she, I told her if she ever needed someone, you know, or it was an emergency, she could reach out to me and I would do my, what I could to help her. You know, I felt bad for her. But after a while, when she just kept taking him back and taking him back, I just told her, I said, you know, you're just going to have to call the authorities. You're on your own. <laughs> I told <clears throat> to me, that, that statement that she made about Sarah knew Melissa had been in an abusive relationship. Makes Melissa a little bit biased toward um, Sarah. Is that, am I saying that right? Toward Sarah against George? Because she's seen it from her own experience, her own past experience of her being abused. And so I think she just takes Sarah out of her word that she's being abused. But I don't know that she's seen a lot of actual proof that Sarah's telling the truth. And I don't believe Sarah. You don't want it to stop, you know? He's not doing anything to get help, according to you. And you just keep dealing with it. I mean, you know, there comes a point where it's just stupidity, you know? But that's the run-ins and instances that I've had with him. I've never seen a mark on George, and he's never told me that she's hit her at all. But she has told me in front of him that he has hit her and things that he's done. And he was not denying it. He never denied it. <laughs> so. 
It could have been that he didn't deny it because he didn't want to have to deal with any of the consequences of him disagreeing with Sarah to one of her friends. So that doesn't mean much to me. I don't expect that he would deny it. George and her both expressed to me on many occasions that they knew they needed help. Yeah. But I'm guessing through their financial situation, not having any work, it's probably why they didn't do much. Right. Yeah. Here it is again. Um, she's saying that they didn't have any work. But George worked at Ace Hardware. So what do I mean? What did they mean? I mean, we got several people that said that he worked at Ace Hardware. His mom said it. Brian Boone said it. Sarah said that he worked at Ace Hardware. George said that he worked at Ace Hardware. So, what do they mean that he didn't have any work? I'm confused about that. Did he get fired before he died? I don't know. When you saw them together, who looked to be like a more dominant? Did one seem to be more dominant over the other? George. George was very confident. Um, you know, he wasn't arrogant or anything. He, he, for the most part, stayed to himself. Like I said, there are a couple people here that he knew. <laughs> you know, from, I will say, another life <laughs> from Philadelphia. And, um, you know, George was the one I always seen driving the vehicle. George is the one I always seen playing with the child. Um, you know, never saw Sarah out. Okay. So she said, George is the one that I always seen playing with the child. Never saw Sarah outside playing with her own child. Now, this doesn't really match what Sarah says in her police interrogation. She says, I'm an outstanding mother. So, what's going on here? <laughs> Who's telling the truth? Is it Sarah or Melissa? Playing with her kid, ever. Um, as a matter of fact, most of the time, Lucas, you would find him riding around the property on his bike unattended. No parents outside, no nothing. Um, because I had actually had a conversation with Sarah about that. <laughs> and I said, you know, the, the kid was a great kid, don't get me wrong, he never did anything to get in trouble, but he was more my concern for his well-being. You know, when he's all the way riding over here and around some of these corners with the dumpsters, these people don't see nobody, and they sure ain't gonna see no kid on that. So I had a conversation with her about that, and we haven't had any really problems. I thought I can say I've only seen Lucas on his bike away from her like that twice. She actually had secluded him to stay in front of the building, you know, which was fine. I just didn't want to go over here. <laughs> but yeah, you didn't see Sarah at all. The only time I ever saw her, especially after the incident that took place with Emmett and his ex-girlfriend, um, it was more like a confrontation that took place in the office. She made an accusation on Emmett saying that he was trying to forcefully, like, I don't want to say rape, but he was trying to push himself on her. On Sarah? Um, on Sarah. Some, so a, she made that claim. Some tenant? A different yeah, tenant. another tenant that knew George from Philly. Um, and they confronted the two of them. Um, you know, I will say Sarah hold her hold, held her ground when the girl confronted her and asked her and said, you know, don't lie to my face. And Sarah said, yeah, he did, you know. So I was surprised because she knew that girl was overbutt. <laughs> she's larger than me. So, you know, I was like, oh, my gosh, okay, well, maybe there's some truth to that. But it ended up, you know, just fizzling out. It was Okay, so Melissa said that Sarah accused Emmett of trying to force himself on her. First of all, I don't believe that. She seems to be the aggressive one in all of her relationships. Um, but second of all, she said that she believed her, believed Sarah, Melissa believed Sarah because Emmett's girlfriend was quite a bit larger than them. And Sarah didn't seem the least bit afraid of Emmett's girlfriend. Now, Sarah, she's not really afraid of people. 
no matter how what position of authority that they have over her, she is fearless. And there's like a, a psychological term for that. I'm trying to remember what the O stands for. I know it's ODD. I think it's Oppositional Defiance Disorder. But, you know, she's gone up against police. She's got no fear. She goes up against her jailers, um, her, her judges, her attorneys, you know, all kinds of people that can cause her to have a bad life. You know, she just has no fear. She's fearless. And, you know, I think that she has a severe case of that ODD diagnosis. I mean, of course I'm not some kind of doctor or anything like that that can diagnose people, but I have seen that behavior before, and I'm pretty sure that's what it stands for. Like, um, she's defiant against people in positions of authority. You know, probably she had problems with that in school, too. Straight-A student. After that situation took place, you really didn't see Sarah too much. She was pretty intimidated. Um, those two folks are actually a pretty large family that I have living here on site that actually took up four units at that time. So the whole fam family lived here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a little intimidating. <laughs> so after that, we really didn't see a whole lot of her. But before that, they would hang out periodically. The other two families? No. They just knew each other from back in the day. Oh, yeah. the couple that? Uh, the kids did. Kids. Yes, yeah. that's what initially prompted it, and then that accusation was made yeah. during that same time. Okay. So, and when it comes to the kids on my property, I stay very involved with them. Yeah. We had some issues with our bus routes and all kinds of stuff, and uh, we had some kid vandalism being done, broken glass bottles. They were pulling glass bottles out of the trash, breaking them, thought it was fun. Um, and one kid told on another, and the parents got involved. It became a little bit of an issue, yeah. so I had to get the middle to squash it. Drinking coffee every oh, day didn't work for me, but I couldn't figure out why until I went. I mean, no, I don't. Nothing really. They would heard nicknames drunk with the bear. I mean, you know, literally. <laughs> Drunk at the bear. <laughs> okay, I don't know where um, Orlando, Florida people come up with their nicknames, but this one is really weird. Her nickname is Drunk at the Bear. I thought she said Drunk the Bear. And I don't understand that. But I do like the nickname that George's family gave to Sarah. They call her the Blue-Eyed Devil. And I think that one is much more descriptive of Sarah, you know, defines what she really looks like in person, especially to George's family. I'm sure they saw her with that look, the blue-eyed devil look, pretty frequently in the two years that they were together. I'm breaking it down to two years. I don't give her that five months. We know they drank from sunup to sundown. Would she ever... I know she confined in you a lot. Would she ever admit that she was an alcoholic to you? Yeah. She would. Yes. Okay. I wish I still had my text messages. I she would send it to me on text many occasions. I know we drink too much and blah, blah, blah. Uh, she told me that George one time. Okay, I think she's misspeaking here because I don't think Sarah would ever admit to being an alcoholic. Well, I know, she, I know she won't admit to being an alcoholic. We saw that in the police interrogation. Um, she's, she said, I'm not an alcoholic. So I don't believe that she would ever admit to that. And when um, Melissa says that Sarah did admit to it, she, she quotes Sarah as saying, I know we drink too much. Now, that's not saying that she's an alcoholic. That's not admitting that she's an alcoholic. She's downplaying it here. I know we drink too much. I enrolled in AA and was getting help. Now, brother, that was any truth. I have no idea. 
um, a lot of stuff like that. She said George enrolled in AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. She didn't say that she, Sarah, enrolled in Alcoholics Anonymous because Sarah would never admit that she's an alcoholic. She excels at everything. She's an outstanding mother, too. Take with a grain of salt. <laughs> right. You know, I think she was more concerned about the image that was being put in my head for them, and I think she was just trying right, to paint a prettier picture. Right. Because I will say, <laughs> it was like a week later, she was gone. <laughs> and when we go... She said the word drunk, and then she cracked up laughing. Now, I'm going to probably laugh along with her because I'm amused by that. But if you want to see this video without my laughter or without my commentary, you know, just have the original video, I will pin it in the comment section because YouTube won't let me paste in the description box. But I'll pin it in the comment section so you can go and watch this video without my commentary if you want to. But it is a reaction video, so I think... That's why we would all be here is to react to this. Inspecting the property and walking around different projects. We do a lot of uh, pressure washing throughout the year. We do that a couple of times. You know, I ride around the back sides of the buildings checking everything out. We've got a property drainage system back there. You always knew because you'd ride back there and you'd hear, I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning there, drunk, falling down, done up. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I can't. I guess it's over. All right, let's not beat me up on not giving people credit for their content. Now, here is this original video that we were just reacting to. It's on this channel, Deep Dive True Crime. And it's called Interrogation of Property Manager Who Spills the Tea on Sarah Boone and George Torres Jr. Okay, this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this link. Okay, I don't normally do it from this device. Anyway, so I'm gonna copy the link and I'm gonna put it in the comments and then I'm gonna pin it. So it'll be the very top of the comments. So y'all can come back and watch this and not beat me up over it. My goodness. Anyway, what did y'all think about this apartment manager's interview with the police? I was kind of amused by it. I, I thought she had some good information, you know, especially I liked the part where she told the dates that they moved in. Because I think that, you know, we really needed that, that timeline of their relationship. So, George made his first post on Facebook about Sarah. October 2017 and then he lost his life February 2020 so it was not three and a half or four years like Sarah claimed repeatedly claimed and so you know I think that's why she wasn't as attached to George as she could have been you know if they had been together longer you know, she might have actually cared more about him and would not have let him suffocate to death in her suitcase. I'm speculating on that. I don't know. She may have become more resentful of him the more she got to know him and the more water went under the bridge and the more times that she called the police on him and whatever else she did to him. Okay, well, that's the end of the video.